Hi guys, welcome back. On my second to last video, I introduced you to a new three-way project I was working on and I was using some pretty cool mid-range drivers and I asked if anyone would be interested in reviews and a lot of you were. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to measure this ScanSpeak uh, 15M something or other uh, mid-range driver today and look at its performance. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about this Morel MDM55 mid-range dome driver. Now, they're quite different. One's a cone, you know, it's a nominal 6-inch driver. The other's a 2-inch dome. So quite a bit different drivers uh, and different performance criteria, though um, they both fit in that typical three-way kind of genre. So I'm not going to do a back-to-back -back comparison, but when you look at the data, the frequency responses, the distortion, that kind of thing, keep the other in mind. Just know that it's not really fair, you know, to directly compare them. Because if they were both six-inch mids or both two-inch domes, then I would compare them very closely and give my comments that way. This video is going to be about this driver here, and then uh, we'll talk about this one later. So I already opened the packaging to this ScanSpeak uh, driver here. Uh, I forgot to record it. So this is essentially how it came to me. It's not the greatest packaging, but it protected the driver. This is the discovery line, so I don't think they put their fancy packaging into it. Here's some close-ups of the driver. Uh, I'm really impressed with the cone and surround. It is not a rubber surround. It's a foam surround, but... It's a very nice looking driver all around, cast basket, uh, nothing too, too fancy, but um, certainly looks the part and, uh, you know, can't be mistaken for something cheap. Um, good gold plated terminals. The cone is a hmm, glass fiber, I believe. I'd have to look at the spec sheet to confirm that, but it's definitely got the weave. It's got a phase plug uh, that looks very well centered and everything. Overall, good, well-built driver. Okay, so I chose this baffle size. We have here 285 millimeters tall and 265 millimeters wide. About 10 and a quarter inches wide, 11 and a quarter inches tall. And I chose this because this is a mid-range, so it's going to be used in a three-way, or at least I would hope so. Possibly work with a subwoofer, but it would be a bad choice. So you're going to use a woofer below this, and you're not just going to use a 6-inch woofer because, well, you might actually, that's how Jason plans to use them. More likely people are going to use an 8-inch woofer like I'm using, possibly even a 10 or a 12-inch woofer because this thing, being a, a bit of a larger format mid, is capable of mating up with some big woofers. So that's the idea. Now, I use the baffle width that I'm interested in using, but for the sake of making a smaller air volume, I shaped the box like this. So with that out of the way, I went outside to measure these things. It is a mid-range driver, so it's not critical that I measure in such an environment, but because it's a large mid-range driver, this thing could be used down to 200 or so hertz. So I want a good, accurate data all the way down to even 100 hertz or less. And this is the result I got. So I'm displaying this in XM because I just had a little bit of an, uh, an issue with the sound easy capture. But you can see here that we have generally good agreement between both drivers. Nothing spectacular, um, but mostly they're bang on except for just little dips and peaks and things like that. Um, overall, they're in very good agreement. So really no complaints there. Uh, the driver is very sensitive. The spec sheet shows about 92 and a half db sensitivity and that's about what these are it's it climbs up to 95 d just scraping 95 db in and around the 1100 hertz range and this is partly because the baffle adds some energy um, because of diffraction um, but it might even be a little more sensitive than advertised so that's pretty good um, you have solid extension down to 200 hertz you could easily cross this in the 2 to 300 range you know, extension into the upper frequencies is definitely looking safe to 3000 hertz, possibly even higher. So this is a mid-range that definitely takes the kind of the low end range of mid-range, but um, definitely is capable of extending up pretty high to mate with a ribbon tweeter, uh, a, a smaller dome tweeter, 
um, or anything like that. The response shape itself is pretty manageable too. Uh, nothing too um, crazy or out of the ordinary. It's not a ruler flat line, but certainly a passive crossover is workable with this mid-range, no problems at all. Okay, then I went inside to get off-axis measurements. Uh, it's just a little tricky to do outside, and what we're looking for here is more trends than anything, not absolute accuracy. So I just slowly uh, went in 10 degree increments, and these are the results I got. Uh, so you can see in the 900 to 1000 hertz range, you can see where that baffle is adding energy, and as you move off, off axis, you get a little bit of a, a divergence. Um, this is totally fine. There's nothing to be alarmed about there. You can see uh, above 4000 hertz, there's a lot of divergence and craziness going on with the off-axis response. This to me looks like cone breakup, which is pretty common for this diameter of driver. Also, you can see the trend of this breakup showing up in the distortion data, which I'll show to you briefly up ahead. While I was in the quieter environment of the shop rather than outdoors, I took distortion data. I started with the uh, cumulative spectral decay. You can see here this driver isn't the quietest driver in the world. It um, You can see above 4000 hertz there is that breakup kind of showing up. It's not crazy, it's you know not out of control. Uh, it's certainly very clean around 2000 hertz, 3000 hertz. And then below that, uh, this thing just, it's not bad, I've listened to it. Uh, it's It's not an issue but it certainly doesn't shut up very quickly. Uh, it's got a little bit of ringing throughout the entire bandwidth. I shouldn't say a little bit. I mean, it's just, it's low in amplitude. It's nothing bad, but it's not good either. And here's the harmonic distortion data, which I'll let you pause and go back and look at because I'm just not into presenting that stuff. Now I'm gonna get TS parameters. Um, so I start with an impedance sweep outside of the box. Okay, and then I put it into the test enclosure um, with the known volume. I think this was 6.1 liters. And then with that information, I can get the TS parameters. And this is sample one. Overall, these TS parameters look reasonable to me, especially for mid-range. Uh, they'll work well in a generally small sealed chamber, which is about what I like to use for a mid-range driver. We can see here with sample two that we get good agreement between the two. Nothing like incredibly good agreement, but uh, in the same ballpark and uh, for mid-range where we're not dealing with port tuning and having to get super, super precise with our base alignment, uh, this is perfectly acceptable and I'm satisfied with this. Here I've measured both drivers outside of the box, I should mention, and overlaying them over each other, they are both in very good agreement. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference in magnitude at FS, which is completely normal and acceptable. There's nothing weird about that. Even very, very high-end drivers would show changes like this. Throughout the bandwidth, there's like less than a quarter of an ohm difference. Overall, these drivers are very well in agreement, and I'm happy to see this. So then I just took the files from my measurements and dropped them into XM to see just how well this thing behaves and fooled around a little bit. Uh, it needs a high pass and a low pass to make this thing cooperate as a mid should. It has a ton of sensitivity, which is great. It's hard to find mid ranges like that. Uh, so I'm able to work this thing into almost any shape I want. Uh, but it is probably going to require an L pad, depending on the woofer and tweeter you use with it, uh, which is okay. And um, you can see it comes into shape fairly nicely without too much effort. Don't forget that these files are available for you to download to try this for yourself. You can match it up with other drivers in my test uh, regimen and uh, put it into XM or another software of your choosing and uh, see what it can do for yourself. Don't take my word for it. There's a link in the description uh, to my Dropbox account where you can download these files and try for yourself, as well as all my other driver test videos. So check that out if you uh, so desire. So there you have it, guys. The ScanSpeak 15M is an excellent mid-range driver with huge sensitivity, um, great performance, especially if you want to match it up with quite a robust and large woofer. It's got that capability, but it can match up with most any dome and ribbon. 
although it's not completely immune to the high frequency breakup and things like that. Um, I really like it. I think it's going to be a great performer and I'm excited to see what it can do. I've already listened to it a little bit, so I know it is quite good. Uh, and if you've used this driver, let me know your thoughts. If you plan on using it, let me know your thoughts or ask any questions in the comments below. Also, please subscribe so you can see the upcoming video on this Morel Mid as well. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please continue to watch the videos. Um, thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. You know how it goes. Catch you later.